We've got to keep our country safe. You look at what's happening in Germany. You look at what's happening last night in Sweden. Sweden. Who would believe this? Sweden. They took in large numbers. They're having problems like they never thought possible. You look at what's happening in Brussels. You look at what's happening all over the world. Take a look at Nice. This was the statement of Donald Trump when he referred to the immigration policy in Sweden and how this is destroying our country. The reactions was mainly how wrong Donald Trump was. Carl Bildt, a former prime minister, replied with, what have he smoked? This video, how beautiful and amazing Sweden is in reality, the best country. went viral on Swedes Facebook pages with comments defending our beloved country. Aftonbladet, one of the biggest newspapers in Sweden, replied with an article about everything wrong with the Fox reports. They couldn't admit for one second that Donald Trump had written in a single piece of his speech. So how is Sweden really doing in 2017? Let's find out. I've lived in Sweden all my life. I've eaten Swedish meatballs since I could breathe. And I've seen Sweden as a country has developed in my lifetime. In the beginning of the refugee crisis, I admit it, I was an ignorant and naive Swedish citizen. My thoughts were that we have a responsibility to open our hearts when the world faced difficult times. Time passed and as many people found an interest in the immigrant policy on how it really affected our country. From the start of the refugee crisis in 2015 to 2016, we opened our hearts to over 265,000 immigrants. And every single one of them got a part of our welfare system from day one. The Swedish Democrats saw its rise and was the third biggest party in the election 2014. Today, however, studies show that they are the biggest party. The Swedish Democrats have highlighted the issues that comes along with the enormous immigration and they advocate a drastic change. There is only one problem. The other parties in the parliament refuse to even speak to them, giving them almost zero political influence. If you look at debates before the election 2014, you can see the response that the other parties give to the Swedish Democrats is that they are racist. The other parties don't even speak about how immigration might be a strain for our welfare, which is what every piece of statistics say. Every mainstream media wrote about how the Swedish party was Nazis and racists, which created fear for the people to even dare to express their political opinions. Because if you did, you were a racist. To suggest and admit that our extreme immigration comes with problems is compared with fascism and even in 1930 Germany. This was the start of today's political correctness in Sweden that is starting to tear apart coffee breaks at work, family dinners and the whole country. The perfect man is a man who feels fear and keeps quiet about anything that's against the norms, which are very specific. God forbid him if he doesn't. We have had many cases about people being fired for simply expressing their political opinions because they are wrong. This happened recently when a teacher at a school was fired because he had taken part in a demonstration against the immigration in Oslo, Norway. Remember that Sweden is said to be one of the most democratic countries in the world. Isn't the freedom of expression a fundamental part of a democracy? In the election 2014, the Swedish Democrats succeeded 12.9% of the votes. But why? Let's start with some statistics. Sex crime has increased a lot. Almost 200% between 2011 to 2015. Sweden is the country with most reported rapes in Europe. And what do we do about it? Well, the media claims the increase is because people are more susceptible to report sex crimes while the police is handing out bracelets with a hashtag don't pop. One of every four women is afraid of going out alone at night. The emergency services cannot do their work in some suburbs without being attacked with stones and car fires. This has resulted in many tragic incidents. 
One man died in an apartment fire because firefighters were attacked and couldn't do what they do best, save lives. The Swedish police is on its knees. More and more people quit their job as a police because they don't believe in the system as well as the people in charge of the police departments. The organization within the police is so bad structured that the higher ranked police officers care more about hiding statistics and denying the correlation between crimes and refugees than actually catch the criminals. In Malmö there have never been more unsolved murders than there is today even though they have received extra resources during the years of 2015 and 2016. When the police officers is asked about this in Malmö, their response is that they will start negotiate between the criminal networks so they can prevent them from killing each other. So from now on, we will see our cops working with the criminals. How nice. Oh, I almost forgot the best part. So while the crimes has increased drastically, the police influence have dropped, naturally. Maybe you have heard of something called no-go zones. Basically, we have around 55 no-go zones, according to an article made in 2014. You're probably wondering why. Well, that is because the criminals in these zones are so aggressive that the cops can't even enter without risking their own lives. These no-go zones were created after cops was ambushed in these areas by stone-throwing immigrants. Even our justice system have no sort of reasonable sense. The cops who were ambushed in one of these attacks in Tienstad, Stockholm, were left without no sort of compensation because the court found it reasonable that the cops should have been prepared for that kind of counterattack. So in these no-go zones where the police can't enter is what I would call a free zone for criminals run by the criminals. Sweden has the longest hospital waiting time in Europe. 18% of our retirees are living in poverty. And the economy? What does it cost to give these 265,000 immigrants up to 3,300 in benefits each month and free access to the public care we have built up and fought for for decades? Get ready. The immigration cost is 600 billion Swedish crowns or about 60 billion dollars in 2016 alone. But Sweden is a rich country, right? The money is running out, believe it or not, but this money doesn't grow on trees. The taxes we pay in Sweden is one of the highest in the world. So how much does an average Swede pay in tax per year? 70% in total taxes. How crazy this sounds. Swedes in general don't have a problem paying that amount every month, but at least we want the money to be used to improve our living standards, not reduce. So how are all tax money distributed? All the taxes adds up to 178 billion dollars and as we remember the immigration cost is estimated to be around 60 billion dollars per year. So while we spend more money on the cake on immigration, the slices left for education, healthcare and justice system keeps getting smaller. You do not have to be a rocket science to understand the real issue to why our healthcare, education and justice system is on its knees. When talking about immigration, we are constantly reminded that the people that come to our country have fled war and terrorist zones. What we don't talk about is the people who comes here for economical purposes. I mean, it's not a coincidence that Sweden with its generous welfare system received most immigrants per capita. In the beginning of the immigration wave, our politicians decided to not have ID and age controls on our borders because they felt it was racism. How they can assume it's racism to have ID and age controls is something I will never understand. This naive attitude has caused the society and the Swedish people much pain. There have been several rapes at high schools where the perpetrator had been an adult refugee who have assaulted small classmate girls. We have seen numerous terrorist attacks on European soil recently, in Paris, Nice and Brussels for example. These terrorist attacks have all something in common. The terrorists were all refugees and they were radicalized by the terror group ISIS. We cannot stick our heads under the sand as our politicians. Among the immigration there are ISIS fighters that comes along under the radar and how to manage to find them is a divided opinion, surprisingly. 
But what punishment does an ISIS soldier get here in Sweden? Well, as a human superpower, there can't be another more reasonable solution than to help them with driving license, work, accommodation and therapy. So basically, the punishment you get for slaughtering people, raping women and spreading terror all over the world is a secure life and the life billions of people dream of every day. Is this what we call equal? Is this what we call humanity? Is this one of the reasons why this country is considered the moral superpower? Well, I hope not. Please subscribe to stay updated about this issue.